Even though the United States of America emerged as an independent country after 1776 and was recognized in 1783, the history of these lands is much deeper than that. Thousands of years ago, the first people settled on the American continent. It is not exactly known how the Native Americans first settled in these territories, but a theory suggests that people migrated from Eurasia starting 30,000 years ago across a land bridge known as Beringia. This connected Siberia to North America during the Ice Age, and this migration continued until 10,000 years ago when a glacial period ended and the land bridge became submerged by the rising ocean. The early inhabitants were called the Paleo-Americans, over time, they migrated even deeper into the Americas and formed tribes and nations, creating fascinating civilizations and developing their own cultures. Among the cultures that existed here, we can mention the Adena culture, Iroquois culture, Coles Creek culture, Puebloan culture, and Mississippian culture. But another part of today's United States has an interesting and different history. Speaking about Hawaii, this land wasn't inhabited until the first centuries AD native development started with the settlement of Polynesian people between the first and 10th centuries. Starting in the 15th century, European colonization began. In 1492, a Spanish expedition headed by the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus sailed west to find a new trade route to the Far East, but landed in what came to be known to Europeans as the New World. After this event, in the following decades, more and more ships sailed west to establish colonies and trade posts. The Spaniards began building their American empire using islands such as Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Hispaniola as bases, and they expanded enormously. France founded colonies in eastern North America, a number of Caribbean islands, and small coastal parts of South America. Portugal colonized Brazil. The eastern seacoast was settled primarily by English colonists in the 17th century, along with a much smaller number of Dutch and Swedes. The first successful English colony, Jamestown, was established in 1607 on the James River in Virginia. A new wave of settlers arrived in the late 17th century and established commercial agriculture based on tobacco. Even though there were some conflicts between the Native Americans and English settlers, the colonies managed to expand rapidly and more and more people settled. Each of the 13 American colonies had slightly different governmental structures. In fact, a colony was ruled by a governor appointed from London. This governor controlled the administration and relied upon a locally elected legislature to vote taxes and make laws. By the 18th century, the American colonies were growing very rapidly as a result of low death rates, along with ample supplies of land and food, which attracted a heavy flow of immigrants. The tobacco and rice plantations imported African slaves for labor from the British colonies in the West Indies, and by the 1770s, African slaves comprised a fifth of the American population. The question of independence from Britain did not arise as long as the colonies needed British military support against the French and Spanish powers. The French and Indian War was an event created by the political development of the colonies. It was also part of the larger Seven Years' War. Britain defeated French forces and France lost its colonies and territories in Canada and Louisiana. The war was costly and Britain needed money. The British Parliament passed the Stamp Act of 1765, imposing a tax on the colonies without going through the colonial legislatures. The issue was drawn. Did Parliament have the right to tax Americans who were not represented in it? Crying, no taxation without representation, the colonists refused to pay the taxes. As tensions escalated in the late 1760s and early 1770s, the Boston Tea Party in 1773 marked the start of the revolution. It happened in the town of Boston to protest against the new tax on tea. Parliament quickly responded the next year with the Coercive Acts, stripping Massachusetts of its historic right of self-government and putting it under army rule, which sparked outrage and resistance in all 13 colonies. Leaders from all 13 colonies gathered and created the first Continental Congress to coordinate their resistance. The Congress called for a boycott of British trade published a list of rights and grievances and petitioned the king for redress of those grievances. It wasn't about independence at that point, but this appeal had no effect. And so the Second Continental Congress was created in 1775 in order to organize the defense of the colonies against the British army. The 13 colonies began a rebellion against British rule in 1775 and proclaimed their independence in 1776 as the United States of America. In the American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783,
the Americans captured the British invasion army at Saratoga in 1777, secured the Northeast, and encouraged the French to make a military alliance with the United States. France brought in Spain and the Netherlands, thus balancing the military and naval forces on each side, as Britain had no allies. General George Washington was an excellent organizer and administrator who worked successfully with Congress and the state governors, selecting and mentoring his senior officers, supporting and training his troops, and maintaining an idealistic Republican army. The American Revolution was a success, and at the Peace of Paris in 1783, their independence was recognized. Even so, the former colonies gained more than expected. The expansion to the West began, incorporating the Amerindian lands west of the Appalachian Mountains. A deal was made by the United States President Thomas Jefferson in 1803. He bought the Louisiana Territory from France. The initial diplomats sent to France were allowed to spend up to 10 million US dollars in order to buy just New Orleans and, if possible, the west bank of the Mississippi River. However, the French government said that for 5 million more dollars, all of the Louisiana Territory would be sold. The president approved the deal and the US doubled its size. In the middle of the 19th century, some secessions were happening and Texas joined the Union in 1845. After the war against the Mexican Empire, the United States took important lands and expanded even further. In 1861, after Abraham Lincoln was elected, some states from the South, the Confederation, attacked the rest. The South's revolt was due to controversy over the enslavement of black people. In 1860, the United States was led by Abraham Lincoln, who supported banning slavery in all territories. War broke out in April 1861, when secessionist forces attacked Fort Sumter in South Carolina. After four years of war, the Union achieved its victory, and the Confederates were defeated. National unity was slowly restored, and the national government expanded its power. The 19th century was a period of economic expansion. More and more industries were created, and there was also a focus on infrastructure. In 1898, the American-Spanish War occurred. Americans won short-term battles, and in the Treaty of Paris, the U.S. gained the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Guam. At the beginning of the 20th century, World War I started. Even though the U.S. was neutral, due to German attacks on American ships and their intentions to make Mexico join against the U.S., the Americans joined the Allies. After this event, the economy was growing, and all was good until the Great Depression, which started in 1929. This event shook the world, and created a base on which the Second World War would start. The United States joined the Allies after being attacked at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, by the Japanese Empire. Americans fought a distant war in Europe and the Pacific, providing supplies to the Soviets, such as armored cars, motorized equipment, food, etc., winning battle after battle in the Pacific, getting closer to the Japanese mainland. After D-Day in Europe in 1944, the Americans had a great impact and helped significantly on the Allied side. The war ended in 1945, with Germany capitulating in May and Japan in September after the two nuclear bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The United States and the Soviet Union emerged as rival superpowers in the aftermath of World War II. This was a period known as the Cold War. The two countries confronted each other indirectly in the arms race, proxy wars across the world, including the Korean and Vietnam Wars and propaganda campaigns. The purpose of this was to stop the spread of communism. In the 1960s, waves of civil rights movements began, focusing on the rights of voting and freedom of movement for African Americans and other racial minorities. The Cold War ended with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Afterward, the United States focused on modern conflicts in the Middle East. The beginning of the 21st century saw the September 11th attacks carried out by Al-Qaeda in 2001, which was later followed by the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In 2008, the United States experienced its worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. 